the shop today, we have a 4.7 Jeep. It was overheating. You could pull the radiator cap right after you started it, and it would just constantly, constantly bubble. I wasn't going to make any video about it, but then I got the heads off, and I decided I wanted to show some people some stuff about these cylinder heads that's kind of interesting, and what to look for when you're doing your cylinder heads if you believe you have a blown head gasket possibly look for cracks or some things that you need to do to the cylinder heads to get them prepared for reinstallation. So we're going to be pretty quick. This information is going to be the same on the 4.7 and the 3.7. The only difference between the two cylinder heads on them and the timing is on the V6 model, they have a different reluctor ring on the camshaft and two less cylinders. Other than that, all of the timing is fairly generic. Throughout all of the years from 2002 to when they stopped producing these. So we have our cylinders taken off of our 4.7 and we need to start inspecting them. We're obviously going to inspect the gaskets. We want to pay attention to where the material is missing from and stuff like that. This is the gasket from the cylinder head and you usually flip it over more often than not. Uh, the problem is going to be between this portion and where the gasket is, meaning this side. That's why it's flipped over. In this situation, I'm not certain what's going on yet. I'm going to disassemble these heads and take a look at what's happening here. But I do know that this cylinder is my problem. And I can tell very easily because of how the valves all look in here and how they all look in here. They seem to be wearing evenly with the exception of this cylinder. I have a bunch of oil inside here and coolant doesn't go up but that's a lot of oil and it's impossible for oil to have gotten splashed up inside the dome right there even during the removal because that's a challenge and hard for them to get out of there because they're freaking heavy with the exhaust manifold at them anyways so we're going to talk about that i'm going to take this over to the bench i'm going to drop this valve out of here and we're going to see what's going on in there i suspect that uh we have a bad valve seat um, we're going to inspect that and we're also going to inspect for cracks because we had a coolant problem not so much of an oil problem if we had a smoky white uh, exhaust that would tell us that we either have a bad head gasket or we have a crack somewhere in the head and we're going to go over the inspection points of these cylinder heads where to look for cracks and stuff like that that i found over the years it's not i'm sure i can't cover every single one of them and we're going to talk about what you're looking for as far as did this cylinder head get warped, blah, blah, blah. What is happening, folks? My name's Clay with Clay's AC and Auto Repair and the Clay Way here in Muskegon, Michigan. And I believe my job here on YouTube is not only show you how to fix things, but to inspire you, empower you, and give you something that you never knew you had while taking things from you that you definitely don't need and showing you not to be the next to them, but the very first to you. While teaching you that if anyone else can do it, I promise you, you can do it too. So if this video ends up being helpful, please consider subscribing, clicking the notifications, sharing my videos, and giving me them sweet old thumbs up. There's nothing that you can't do, only things you won't. If you want to help my channel out at nighttime, when you're about to go nighty night, sleepy sleepy, turn down on the old volume on that laptop computer, open it up, and put on one of the sweet Clayway playlists. Let them suckers play from front to back. Or you can donate to the channel, buy something from the merch, all of that stuff. If you've got a question, you can look me up on Facebook under Clay's AC and Auto Repair. I help everybody I possibly can. I can't help you with that old baby mama drama, but I might be able to help you with that whip. And if I know the answer, I'll share it for absolutely free. So I took the cylinder head over to the bench and I'm gonna work on removing the valves that are in it. I need to change both valve guide seals in here and double check the valve stems, make sure they're all good. Since I'm extremely visually challenged, I'm pretty much damn near blind, I have to look really, really close at this stuff and check it for cracks, etc., etc. Okay, so if we look down here, we can automatically see what the issue is. We can see that our valve stem seal has broken off of the top here, and it should look similar to that one, and that's why we're getting oil down inside this cylinder. We don't see any evidence of cracks. 
but we need to check everything and look over it closely to see why we're getting combustion in our cylinders. Filler for silence. 1972, Stephen Hawkins was told by three different doctors that he had less than two years to live. He outlived all three doctors, dying in 2009. Okay, now often we'll have cracks in between the valves right here. We'll have cracks in between the spark plugs. That can all cause combustion problems. We need to clean this off and get a really good look at this area right here and make sure that we don't see anything. But you can pretty much use a magnifying glass in your eye and you should be able to possibly potentially find a crack if it exists. But more than likely, this was just a bad head gasket and this oil leak didn't help the situation. It allowed oil and combustion gas to seep up into the cooling system, which probably caused this head gasket to leak on this side. But we're gonna go ahead and inspect the other side as well. You don't have to remove all these valves, but know what they look like when you pull them out. They're awfully carboned up. So sending this out to the machine shop and having them do it is not a bad idea, but it's not the end of the world. If you don't, you can usually slap this back together and still get another 100, 200,000 miles out of it. Okay, so there's also other ways to check for cracks. Obviously, I have a flashlight here. We turn the flashlight on and turn the lights off, and if we see light through there and all the valves are closed, there's something going on and we need to inspect that further. You can do this with all sorts of different things. Obviously, I don't have any cracks, so I can't show you any cracks, but this has found stuff that I've missed in the past. So, we got the light in there. We don't have anything shining through, but we have something right there. What's going on there? Let's check this other one before we turn the lights back on. Holy crap! Look at that, Batman! That's not supposed to do that. Uh, we better do some investigating and see what's going on. It could be that the cam is pushing down on that valve, so we'll just make sure it's in the right position, make sure that valve is close, but we also need to check this one right here. I'm looking at it and I don't see a reason for that right there. So, I mean, even when I rub my finger across it, I don't see it, but I know that valve is not seating properly. So we're gonna have to figure this out. This is big time. I just caught this. I didn't plan to find anything. I don't think we're gonna be able to tell, but we can see that that valve seat is not seated properly. So that means we're gonna to need to do some adjusting. So it was just a matter of where the valves were sitting at and how the cam was correlated on there. So it just took a pair of ice grips on a place on the cam where it didn't ride on any bearing surface, moved it a little bit, and it sealed them right up. Okay, so some of the other ways that you can do this is you can stick them right inside the coolant passages there and obviously in this area here we shouldn't see any light emitting whatsoever just emitting out of the coolant passages and we can go through all of these and check over each individual one and even at home you can do this they're supposed to do it at the machine shop and they sometimes do but of course they forget things as well just like everybody else so them are some super neat tricks that you can do at home before you send these suckers out. Okay, so if your vehicle got really hot, you need to know if this surface is flat. Now, this is not a super scientific method of doing it, but it's good enough to give you something at home you can do. You can take a straight edge, and in this situation, I'm using a square, and it should be pretty well machined flat. What we can do is we can take a flashlight and we can put it against the areas that are flat. Now, if there's not a hole there, like in this situation, there was a hole, and you can kind of see where my light is at right here, you shouldn't be able to see underneath this edge right here. Now, that's a way to do it. Uh, probably a better way of doing it 
is taking a set of feeler gauges and we're gonna use the 10 thousandths feeler gauge here. We're gonna set it flat on the head. And if we put that feeler gauge right there, as we apply pressure and make sure that it's flat, we cannot get that underneath there. Now to give you an idea of what 10 thousandths of an inch is, this micrometer is actually set at 20 thousandths and this gauge slides in there really, really easy. Now the thinking of why 10 thousandths and you know, not get into uh, thousandths of an inch is you've got a gasket that goes on here and it's going to take up some of that inside here. But if you check this and this gauge fits underneath there, this head needs to go to the machine shop. The head should go to the machine shop, technically speaking, um, anyways, because of all the carbon buildup and if you want it to run well. But taking cylinder heads to the machine shop is really expensive. And you're probably, like in my situation, dealing with a couple decades old automobile, it's probably not worth the value. And even after this repair, this should go 60,000 miles pretty darn easy. So we're gonna take care of the things that need to be taken care of with this cylinder head to make it work, replace the gaskets on it, put it back together, and send her on down the road. You can be confident in what you do. It's just a matter of the level of amount of money that you wanna spend. My channel is not only about showing you how to do something, but explaining to you why and keeping money down in that old corn store. So with that in mind, I'm gonna put this thing back together go on to the next video well that goes to prove that it's not a matter of what you can't do it's only a matter of what you won't do and it goes to show you that if anybody else can do it you can do it too so this is what i mean when i say inspiring and empowering you folks at home to do things and always thinking that if anybody else can do it you can do it too. So if this video was helpful, please consider subscribing, clicking the notification, sharing my videos, and give me them sweet old thumbs up. If you've got a question for me, you can hit me up on Clay's AC and Auto Repair on the Facebook Messenger. I try to answer every single one of them I can. I can't help you with baby mama drama, but I may be able to help you fix these old whips back here. At nighttime, put on your old laptop computer or computer, turn down on that old volume, Put on one of the sweet Clayway playlists and let them suckers play from front to back. I appreciate you folks watching the video. God bless. Have the best of days.